What's up, gang? How you guys doing? It is Lieutenant Sal Blue, 28 year law enforcement veteran and the author of the top 25 mistakes in route to the good life. Coming at you today with my daily podcast. That is right, guys. I'm coming at you today. And I know sometimes on Spotify, I do like a morning session on my podcast and uh, just for my morning commute to work. But uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Today, I was a little rushed for time this morning, and I felt like what I was talking about was, even though it was insightful, it was just a lot of mumbling on my part, so I kind of like just let go of the whole session today, didn't add it to the uh, Spotify podcast, so um, if you guys are uh, on Spotify and you're listening and you all of a sudden I just jump right into the evening podcast... It was by design, guys. I didn't do the uh, little morning session, my morning commute. Um, I will get back to doing it tomorrow, so um, I'll make sure I get plenty of sleep tonight so that I'm uh, motivated in the morning to give you guys what you need in your AM commute. So uh, anyway, listen, guys, as I said before, I'm Lieutenant Sal Blue, and when I come at you on my daily podcast, it's usually because of something that I've done, something that I've seen or something that I've read about, or something common that's going on with a lot of people um, in life, and I'm hoping to help you guys make the change. I'm trying to get you not to be moving like the masses, but to be moving like the successful. The, se se the successful people who are um, doing the right things, and having a good life, and enjoying things properly. So, in today's podcast... I have a question for you guys. I have a question for you guys because I've seen this far too often, right? And I'm going to get deep into uh, the societal norms of why I see this all the time. And I'm also going to get into our programming of why we do this all the time. And so the question that I have for you guys today, man, and write this down Put it in your journal, okay, and go back over it so that you can answer this question for yourself, right? The question I have for you today, guys, is are you drowning from information while starving from motivation? There you go. That is the question for the day. I'm going to say it one more time. Are you drowning from information while starving from motivation? And uh, it's important. That question is very, very important in today's society right now. This is going on. Information society. Everything is going on. Everywhere you look, information is at your fingertips, guys. You know, as I tell you guys, you have to start working on something. Anything. Just start working on something, guys, in order to see some type of results. You got to be working on something. I have so many people that come to me. And, and they say, I want to do this, and I want to do that, but this looks so good, and that looks so good, and this over here looks so great, but then I saw this on cryptocurrency, but I saw this guy doing e-commerce, and they're just going back and forth with everywhere, right? And all they're doing is they're taking this course, and they're taking that course, and they're not finishing any of the courses, most of them, right? So they're taking all of these courses and getting all this information, and they're not acting, they're not starting anything, right? Or even worse, maybe they start a little bit, but they're not following through, which is also very important. And, and I'll leave that for another time, guys. But um, I want to start off by saying this, guys, is that there is no shortage of information out in the world today. No shortage. Um, this is the information era. I, I believe, right? This is the information era of life where there is no shortage. I mean, on anything or literally anything that you want, you can ask. It is at your fingertips, man. Um, the world of information technology has changed so dramatically, guys, that the answers to anything you wish to do is just a touch away or just a talk away. Right? Siri, can you tell me where? Right? And so Siri's always listening, or Alexa, or Google, or, or, or whomever. Right? 
is always listening because every single answer that you need to anything that you want in the universe, anything, is just a touch away, right? Somebody has spoken about it. Somebody has taught it, right? And somebody has taught it right where you could truly, truly learn it. So the information is there, guys. The information is there. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, for most of the world, we are trained a little different, right? We are trained to use our brains, right? The whole capacity of our brains, and, and as brilliant as our brains is, we don't even know half uh, of what the brain's capacity is, right? But as, as much capacity as our brain has, we are trained to use it to memorize information, right? We use most of our brains to try to memorize, to try to memorize things. And um, and so that is um, we're memorizing things, guys, that are readily available at our fingertips. Is is the point I'm making? And so, so here we go, trying to memorize things. You know, uh, dates of presidents and and um and special holidays and and the Pythagorean theorem and and, and geometry and. and math equations and everything else we're trying to memorize all of that right to to uh especially in physics right in physics i had a professor miyakawa that just wrote on the board like a million miles a minute and then you had to get all of that information down and memorize it as he went back and erased it from the beginning and started all over again right over and over again <laughs> and that was in college but uh, i digress a little bit because um I was not a good person to be memorizing things, right? Now, I'm not saying I had a horrible memory, but it took a lot of work. It took a lot of my glycogen, tons of my energy. Uh, uh, it was used up in memorizing, guys. And we were taught this and we were rewarded, right? So it's like Pavlo's dog. We were rewarded every time that we memorized a, a bunch of information that can at the same time be given to us by a touch of a button or speak of a word but we were rewarded by it so what we began to do was ignore technology and just try to memorize things and bring things from memory now a lot of times when you try to bring things out of your memory it takes so much work that by the time you remember it you have no energy to act how about that man how about that? So, you know, that is our school system. And I will save that for another time, man, and another debate. Because um, I just believe that it should change. Our school system should change. And, um, you know, with especially all the money that we've uh, spent on our kids' colleges and grade school and everything else for them to just grow up to learn how to take exams and memorize is it's just, they could cut that in half. They could just cut that in half, man. I, we could be so much further in this world um, if uh, we could use our brain's capacity to really, really solve problems, right? Uh, so uh, uh, that is my rant on, on, on our educational system, right? But what I'm telling you guys is this, right? When we use our brains capacity to just memorize and, and just take in tons of information what happens is we get information overload guys we get information overload and so um when we get information overload what happens is we start to shut down right we start to shut down our body starts to shut down our body starts to try to conserve energy so in conserving energy it stops you from moving forward and acting, right? So you've taken in all of this information and because we are trained to try to memorize everything, right? Instead of reading a little something and acting on it and, and making it instinctual, right? Instead, we try to memorize it and then that slows us down. That slows down the entire path of progress, trying to memorize something because you get information overload. So um, when I was younger, guys, right, growing up uh, growing up in the streets of uh, New Jersey, right, many years ago, um, when I used to play street basketball, we played uh, at all of the different parks, we played street basketball, right? 
And so, uh, one of the most exciting things, we used to love watching the uh, point guard basketball players with the ball handle, you know, like the Harlem Globetrotters and stuff like that. And they would make moves and people would reach for the ball and fall to the ground. And you would call it the shake and bag. So you would shake somebody and make some moves. And the crowd would go wild. They would go wild just from your ball handling skills and that the person couldn't steal the ball. And then you shook him, he fell to the ground, and then you went up and you did a simple layup, man. Or maybe even went all dramatic and just dunked the ball after you made him fall to the ground, right? Totally and completely embarrassing. But as we were the point guards and we were doing the ball handling, we would say something to our competition, or a lot of times it was just our friends from the neighborhood, and that saying was, study long, study wrong right study long study wrong if any of you guys have ever came up with street ball you know the saying when somebody is staring at you too long right when they're staring at you too long trying to study your moves right they have a tendency to lock up to freeze up because they're trying to take in too much information and that information overload calls, causes them not to be able to act as agile and as fast as they should as if they just allowed it to take place and just let the action come to them so study long study wrong and um, uh, this was just our way of, of telling the competition man don't study me too long because you are going to mess up you're going to mess up man so um I was a uh, I was uh, talking about uh, when when I was playing basketball on the street and what the biggest thing was when we were coming up was not that somebody scored on you and you lost the game, right? But it was when you got burnt, right? So that's saying study long, study wrong and somebody made a move and they embarrassed you in front of all the women out there, all the guys out there, all your friends, the crowd of people, right? you couldn't live that down they would constantly bring up the many times that you got burnt right you could lose a hundred games of basketball but the first time you got burnt right um they talked about you for the whole summer man they talked about you for the whole summer and uh and so it was hard to live that down so you didn't want to be the person okay who studied too long and got it wrong Right? You didn't want to be that guy, guys. And so, um, and you guys know, if you have ever played street ball before, um, as I said before, it is hard enough to go home as a loser, man. But to go home and be embarrassed in front of your friends in the crowd, um, it just, it's just hard to let go. It's hard to let go. So, it was that one lesson, study long, study wrong, that if acted upon, can literally change your life. Now think about that, guys. That one lesson in basketball, on street ball, and, and although it was a many of us uneducated as far as as school was concerned out there, we had one of the greatest philosophies to be successful in life. Study long, study wrong. You study too long, you usually got it wrong. You froze up. It was information overload, right? Too much glycogen, right? Just burnt up and you couldn't act, right? So I want you guys to understand that one lesson. Now, we are always studying things in life, right? Um, but the problem is we are waiting as we study things like we are waiting for someone uh, to come along and give us a test, right? We are waiting for the test of life, the test of somebody going on and saying, hey, you did a good job. You really memorized all that information. You did good. And so we spend countless hours studying, right? But we never have the motivation to act on what we've learned, right? So that motivation in us is lacking because we're waiting for someone to come along and tell us the next phase in our study, the next test that we have to take, the next exam that it has to be to show our proficiency in what we know. But the truth is in life, proficiency is your actions. You have to act on things to become proficient. 
as I told you guys before, and you'll see my every single one of my podcasts, it is all about reps and sets, right? As you put in the reps and sets, right? Making mistakes along the way will come. Making mistakes will come, but it is the reps and sets that allow you to start doing things instinctually. And when you start doing things instinctually, now you're not thinking about them. You're not studying things. You're just acting on things. And that acting causes you to be more motivated about the things that you do. So, um, so throughout life, I want you guys to know, I have obtained most of my success. Most of my success in life has been obtained in motion, right? Even when I didn't have all of the answers uh, to life's tests, because life has many tests that it brings our way, um, I was still able to succeed because I just never stopped moving. You know, I was talking to one of my uh, colleagues today about um, my accommodations on the job, right? I have, um, before I retired, I probably had about 10, 10 accommodations, um, bravery, actions, all everything involved actions, right? Everything involved actions. And the funny part about um, me having 10 accommodations for acting is, is I probably had about a double that, maybe even triple that in disciplinary for the same thing, acting, right? And it all just depended on who was in power that day or who was in charge. But I was always a person of action. I always felt that, hey, I may not fully know the answer, but I need to act, okay? So action became my habit. Now, most of those Disciplines came early on in my career because I just didn't have all the information uh, that I needed But because I was around a bunch of people who didn't like to act right I was about around a bunch of people who just stood around and waited for somebody to come and bring them the answer and Me on the uh, on the other side. I was a person of action. So I was like, well, I'm not waiting for him to give me the answer I'm gonna just go ahead and try this and if it didn't work and I got in trouble then so what right and then I try the next thing and the next thing and the next thing Pretty soon, you know, most of the supervisors and soon when I became a supervisor, most of the administrators and bosses realized that I was just going to act no matter what. And they would have to read about what I did in a report. That's just me. I became a person of action on the job and it made me a better officer. It made me a better sergeant. It made me a better task force team leader. It made me a better lieutenant, shift commander. It just made me better. Because I didn't go to people to look for answers constantly. I constantly acted and brought solutions because my actions um, brought out things and problems that they wouldn't have seen if I wouldn't have acted upon it. So then they were allowed to go back and Monday morning quarterback everything that I did and come up with a better uh, solution on how to go about things. But that solution would have never came about if I wasn't an actor, guys. So most of my success came through constant movement, constant action. Okay. Um, so the one thing that I soon found, guys, as I told you guys, is is most of my answers uh, came to me um, through my actions, and because they came through me through my actions, it motivated me to continually act. And that's what will happen to you guys. As you continually act and answers come to you and some don't and some do. But as they do, right, the answers that do come to you, they will motivate you to keep going and keep striving to try something new, something exciting. And um, so when I say motivated, I want you guys to understand this, right? When I say motivated. I am not talking about being excited for what you are about to do. I'm not talking about that, right? Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm talking about doing something despite any excitement, right? Despite any energy to do it, right? Despite any outside forces telling you you have to get it done, okay? And regardless of the amount of willpower that you think you have. That is the motivation that I am talking about, right? I am talking about doing things because you know you must 
do them. Not because you have to do them, but because you must do them. Right? And when your has become must, then, then your life begins to make dramatic changes. Um, you are going to be successful when you must do something. Because having to do something, uh, you can kind of explain away your motivation with information. You can do it, right? I just don't have enough information to keep going, boss. Right? I just don't have enough information to start this business. I just don't have enough information to go out and get this job. I just don't have enough information to do whatever, to ask this person out on a date. I just don't have enough information. And so you constantly walk around saying you don't have enough information. And you constantly walk around and you don't get anything out of life. You don't receive any gifts from not doing action. From not moving forward. So I want you guys to understand that when it comes to being successful in life, right? I'm telling you right now, do not, do not allow your lack of motivation to stop you from the life that you deserve, right? And, and the only reason I'm telling you is that you were brainwashed, Right, you were brainwashed. I know, I know. This is hard for you guys to say, and and I hate to bring it up again, man. But you were brainwashed. You were brainwashed to believe that the power is in knowledge, right? That like knowledge is power. They talk about that all the time. You know, the more knowledge you have, the the greater power you're going to have. And and I'm gonna tell you what. That is as false as the day is long right that is as false as the day is long the power isn't in the knowledge right the power is in applied knowledge and applied knowledge comes through action right so you know something you do it and and i it's so funny guys that um there are people out there there are people out there i just seen an interview uh, with uh, Steve Jobs being uh, being uh, trying to be crushed by a hater, telling him that he didn't know all of this information, right? How he didn't know about you know the technology that he was talking about, and um, he agreed with the person. He agreed with the person and said that yes, I don't know about everything, and I am going to make decisions and, and get those decisions wrong, right? But through my actions, through my actions, right, the people around me can learn from those mistakes and then build upon them and we can create something special. But if I never, if I never act, if I never speak about what I'm going to do and then go out and do it, then all we have is a bunch of information. All we have is a bunch of information that's going to get us nowhere, guys. And that is what you will have in life if you constantly, constantly, number one, worry about um, the test that someone's going to give you on the amount of information that you know, right? So, so you gotta understand that. If you are worried about when you try something, and people go, I can't believe you tried that. You don't even know about blank. I can't believe you tried to invest in cryptocurrency. You don't even know about blank, the blockchain, whatever, right? I can't believe you tried to start a business. You don't even know about small business financing, right? Something like that, right? I can't believe you tried to write a book, right? You don't even know how to... I don't know, whatever, man. It doesn't even matter, okay? All I know is people are always going to judge you because they are not acting, number one, right? People are love to sit on their ass and talk about what you're doing or what you should do, but they never get out there and do it themselves. They never step out there, right? I've had so many people talk about what I'm doing, and those same people never stepped out there, you know? Um... I'm doing workouts, I'm doing spin bike, I'm writing books, I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing blogs, right? Um, and even sometimes I'm even working two jobs, guys. I'm even working two jobs. And all because I just want to make things happen, right? I make mistakes and I try to make corrections to those mistakes. Sometimes my mistakes take me way too far down the road um, uh, financially. 
and I have to back up. I have to back up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to have to fund this a different way. I'm going to have to do this a different way. Um, but because I went down that path and I felt the pain of heading down that way, I won't head down that way anymore. But I acted on it, right? If you constantly use your um, intuition, philosophy on, oh, I read that maybe you shouldn't go down this path, you won't never know for yourself. You won't never know, right? Some things you just got to try, right? Make an attempt, go for it, and see how it works out, right? But in order to do that, guys, you got you to gotta be motivated to the point of must, right? And, and I don't mean motivated as in excited about it, as I say once again. So you don't have to be excited about it. But you do have to do it, guys, in order to have success in your life. So, listen, I'm going to wrap up here today and uh, just tell you guys, uh, number one, thank you for coming to check me out. Thank you for coming to check me out because I feel like there are far few people out there getting the right information on things that will help them to move their life forward. So, thank you for coming to check me out. Also, guys, um, as I expand, as I grow, as I become... Uh, a much better podcaster, blogger, um, author, and everything else. I am going to be getting all out there and doing all types of interviews. So um, that'll be in season two of my Top 25 Mistakes podcast. I am going all in on my, another book, guys. So I'll be working on that. And I'll be talking about that as often as possible, okay, leading up to the launch of my new book. And, and also, guys... Before you even get my new book, make sure you grab my old book, uh, Top 25 Mistakes and Route to the Good Life, um, second edition. And, uh, and that's going to be at LieutenantSoundBlue.com. So check it out, LieutenantSoundBlue.com to get the second edition of my book, Top 25 Mistakes and Route to the Good Life, as well as an order form bump, which is my audio book. Man, I spent some time, man. I spent seven days recording that book. Sometimes I was in my car right in the driveway in the summertime because my house is so loud sometimes in the basement sometimes I got up three o'clock in the morning to do some recordings it was something else it was rough man but I got it done and I'm excited about that so you can check out my uh, audio book as well if you have an audible you can grab that up for free guys um, also um, check me out on all the social media platforms right so Instagram TikTok, snapchat Twitter Facebook um, blogger and Reddit as well. So all at Lieutenant Sal Blue. Um, that is, put that in the search engine and you'll find me there, Lieutenant Sal Blue, with the guy with the big smile on his face all the time because I'm almost always happy. But anyway, guys, I will talk to you guys tomorrow, man. Thanks for coming along and checking me out. And you guys have a great evening. All right, talk to you tomorrow. Deuces.